Good afternoon, cellar dwellers, and welcome to another live segment of Henry James from the basement. <clears throat> Coming to you today on TSP Live Day. Uh, the Tony Soul Project will be playing live uh, today at 5 p.m. We will be coming to you live in, in Brookfield, Massachusetts from uh, Triple Spiral Studios, uh, hosted by Brian and Dina LaDuke. They've been generous enough to open up their place to us and let us do a live stream from um, their studio, which is fabulous. I think, um, you know, we're looking for new avenues, and I think this is going to open up a new avenue for people, and, um, you know, it's going to be an unbelievable time. We're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to play a set. We're going to stop. We're going to try and talk to the people on camera and um, uh, try and make it as interactive as possible because we miss you all. We want to hang with you. We want to make it like a real gig. So, um, so it's Saturday afternoon. The reason for this installment is... Um, uh, I, over the quarantine here, I've kept myself busy through my friends have donated to me a bunch of cool stuff and uh, I put together a base. First one I've put together in a long time and um, from, from, from soup to nuts, I mean, I got to shout out to Tino Sanchez for the beautiful Fender, genuine Fender, classic 50s. Um, um, beautiful nitrocellulose lacquered amber tinted neck absolutely fabulous neck thank you Tino and a shout out to my buddy Dana who found me the body which is a, a, a 2018 Ventara it was four pounds of base is the base is eight pounds at best it's it's light it's beautiful I, um, the only thing I um I had to buy tuners hip shot ultralight tuners which the, it's perfectly weighted it doesn't neck dive or anything it's I had the um, pure vintage 63 pickups the Emerson tone circuit I had to get the pick guard uh, these knobs are special from my buddy Dana they they've been with him a long time I told him that I'm never getting rid of this bass it's a killer bass it turned out absolutely killer completely not what I expected and uh, so I told Dana I'd keep the knobs on this base and they'll always stay with me. I bought the pick guide, shielded the whole cavity, wired it up, installed everything, uh, even got an American F fender neck plate and um, installed it all, put it all together, Just kind of set it up half ass. It played really good. I couldn't tell if it was going to be a good base. And a few months back, I sold my um, guitar tech, Dave Dick. I would a D-string guitar, shout out to your brother. Um, I sold him my classic, my surf green classic vibe P bass. I've been moving around a bunch of basses lately to get to where I want to be. Um, um, you know, to weed down the herd and get rid of a few. And instead of having a, a lot of cheapos, uh, I just got rid of them all and got myself what I really wanted, a 64. Fender P bass, I got rid of the Ventero, I got rid of the Framus, I got rid of uh, a couple of Ibanezes, I got rid of about six or seven basses. Out of those six or seven basses came two, this one and the 64 pre-CBSP and Surf Green. So I'm weeded down a little bit. I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, the, um, the market's, it's a, a buyer's market right now. If you've got money, you can have yourself a really wonderful instrument for cheap money. And um, I found that out in the trade because I got rid of a whole, I got rid of six bases for, for, for two, or five bases for two, so, you know. But the 64 is killer. I'm playing that one tonight live with TSP, 5 p.m. Come join us, come dance, come, come have early cocktails. We'll just have a, um, we'll just have a hell of a time tonight. And so... This segment, so what I'm getting at is I put this bass together, so I got to where we got the beautiful neck from Tino, I got the, Dana found me the body, got me the string tree, got me the um, bridge, and these knobs I said were special to him, so they're on this bass now and they'll never leave, this bass will never leave my hands. I had bought the pick guard, I shielded it, wired it, and then my buddy Dave did. Uh, that's where we were. I sold him my green seafoam 
uh, P base, and I sold it to him for uh, um, a hundred bucks under what I wanted because I wanted him to throw a couple of good setups in. And I knew this base needed a. This is my buddy JJ was going to set this base up, but it was set up pretty good out of the box when I put it together. But the fret ends were like little razor blades because the neck's been sitting so long, so I had to have it um, dressed, and I had to have the fret ends filed down a little bit to make it comfortable. And so um, Dave did that for me. Dave took my 83 and this base, and he and he set them both up perfectly for me. And when I got this base, I, I mean, I played the 83 last night. I didn't even look at this base until this morning. And I got it out, and I started playing it. Well, let's turn so we hear it. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous instrument. I am. I couldn't have been happier at the results. This is a completely gigable instrument for really cheap money. Some parts donated, some parts bought, but as for uh, this bass plays two strings, this bass plays like a bass of three times its money. So, if I was to buy this bass new from Fender, I think it would be around. Eleven hundred bucks, ten, a thousand bucks, eleven hundred bucks. Um, for what I got into it, I think I got seven, six hundred bucks into this base, six or seven hundred bucks into this base. And uh, like I said, most of it was was help from my friends, and I'm just giving you a realistic price. But just goes to show you. So 50s P, even though it's got 63 pickups, Emerson tone, 60s tone circuit. It's, it's got that whole 50s vibe. Let me turn down the tone a little bit. It's awesome, man. It's just awesome bass. I'm psyched. Playing it tonight if I didn't already make dating plans with the 64. Killer. Killer, killer, killer. So that's my story on this, and it's um, Dakota Red, Toward God, total 50s maple, fat, huge, skinny neck. It's, it's a dream to play and it, uh, just to kill the bass not a dead note on it not a dead note on it it just sounds great so that's my little thing today I might even do a little play along let's see what's on the list of tracks here from um, let me see I, I've got this little program called um, Bass guitar tips. Uh, they got backing tracks to play to. Now I don't know. Oh, look at. Oh, let's go down. I mean, we got high ground. Hold the line. I can't help it. Michael Jackson. Uh, for the love of money, the old. <laughs> Pick Anthony Jackson. Bullet Boys version. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got on here. Oh, look at I wonder if I remember this one. Let's see, where are we? View the chord chart. Nah, you know what? We're just going to go for it. Uh, I played this one way back when I was playing with Mark Cavoda in Fusion. I wonder if I remember it. Let's see how the... <laughs> Thank you. 
I think this bass sounds great. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Um, sometimes building them is better than buying them. And um, I love that song. I wish um, I, I forgot how fun that was playing that 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 song right there. I hope I, I hope I did it a little bit of justice. Like I said, I just went down the list and found the backing track. So um, bass guitar tips has all those backing tracks. They're wonderful to play to. They're good for your time and you can hear them better and your timing is a little better than playing along with a recorded song because a recorded song uh, tends to sl speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down depending on the studio and how the tracks came out. You know, they, they, they screw with stuff to, and it screws with you when you're playing along with it. So to have a backing track that has perfect, ti track, per perfect time and, and a good drum track to it like I said, base, BassGuitarTips.com. Uh, 20 bucks cost me for, I think I got 100 track backing tracks to play to and learn to. Keep you busy during this. That's my installment today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Click like, click share. Um, I'll have pictures and detailed work of exactly what I did for this bass uh, to accompany this video, and um, uh, you'll see the see the work that went into it, and uh, it kept me busy. And, and like I said, it, it came out excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, the Mexican Fender stuff is, I, I can't say anything bad. I mean, it's not my 64, or it's not my 76, or my 83, but this is a great bass for under a thousand bucks. Uh, how can you go wrong? My um, other Mexican bass that I turned into a 62, so now I got a 50, 58 and a 62 clone from, Mexican, from, from the Mexican Fender line. Both bases are complete. Uh, excellent machines and um, for the both bases I think I got them for, uh, for around 1500 bucks for a pair.
And let me tell you, no studio would ever turn me away walking in with this bass. <laughs> There's just no way. It's killer. Thank you all. Hit the like, subscribe, share button. And uh, we'll see you guys all tonight for the Tony Soul live from Triple Spiral Studios out in Brookfield. Thank you all and have a great day. Peace.